it's time to take a look at the 2024 AP Chemistry exam questions. The free response questions have just been released, and now we're going to walk through the answers. Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and this is my walkthrough for FRQ question number one. I need to let you know that I don't work for College Board, and this is not an official answer key. You'll need to wait a few months for that. I'm just a guy who's been teaching AP Chemistry for the past 24 years. And if you're getting ready for next year's exam, then check out my full AP Chemistry course videos right here on YouTube, as well as my comprehensive review materials, along with exclusive tips and tricks over at ultimatereviewpacket.com. Now, let's get started. So question one is a long essay question. This is worth a whopping 10 points. And we can see that there's a balanced equation up here. And it says that a student is studying the reaction between lactic acid, uh, C3H6O3, and sodium hydroxide, NaOH, is represented in the balanced equation. And we have the structural formula of lactic acid given here. And it says circle the hydrogen atom that most readily participates in the chemical reaction with sodium hydroxide. Well, that should be the terminal uh, hydrogen atom over here, the one that is uh, going to uh, ionize the most easily. Let's take a look at part B here. It says the student begins the experiment by dissolving 10.22 grams of sodium hydroxide in enough water to produce 500 milliliters of solution. Calculate the molarity of the sodium hydroxide solution. Well, we start by realizing that we have 10.22 grams of sodium hydroxide and we have to convert that to moles. So in our conversion factor, we'll put uh, grams on the bottom and one mole on top. And it does tell us that the molar mass of this is about 40.00 grams per mole. So when you divide this out, you find that we have 0.2555 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now, we just have to, have to take that amount and divide it by the liters, which will be half a liter. 500 milliliters is 0.5 zero zero liters. So when you divide that, you find that the molarity is 0.511 molar. So that's part B. Moving on to part C, we have a titration curve. And now we're going to use that sodium hydroxide solution with a burette, a pH meter, and an Erlenmeyer flask to titrate a 25 milliliter sample of lactic acid solution. And we have the data given in this graph. And part C says use the information in the graph to determine the approximate pKa of lactic acid. Well, we should remember that at the half equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa of a weak acid used in a titration. So looking at the titration curve, this inflection point, which represents the equivalence point, is at 16 milliliters. So the halfway point would be 8 milliliters, right around here. And the pH at that point seems to be very close to 3.9, as far as I can tell. So the pKa is 3.9. Now, we're going to move forward here. It says the preceding diagram represents the relative amounts of major species in a sample of the solution in the flask at one point during the titration. Of course, we're omitting the water. And it says draw an X on the titration curve at a point in the titration where the reaction mixture would be represented by this diagram. And of course, justify. This is one of those cases where I think it's actually easier to justify before you put the X there. Uh, probably what we want to notice is that we have a very specific uh, ratio of conjugate base to conjugate acid. We have uh, two uh, ions of conjugate base for every four molecules of conjugate acid, or weak acid, I should say. So we can plug this into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and we're trying to solve for the pH. Now we just said that the pKa of the acid is 3.9 and the ratio of conjugate base to weak acid is 2 to 4. So uh, I can plug those in as the ratio. So when I key this into my calculator, I find that the pH is about 3.6. So I need to place an X on the graph right around pH 3.6. So that's right around here. So that is where you should have put the X. Now, as we move on, we have the same titration curve, but now we have a repeat of this experiment. It says the student repeats the experiment, but uses a solution of sodium hydroxide with twice the concentration as shown in this preceding table. 
on the graph, draw the titration curve that would be expected for experiment two, where experiment one is already shown on the graph. Well, there are a few things we need to realize. First of all, we should realize that the acid hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is we've uh, doubled uh, the concentration of the base. So that means that the, that the titration should, uh, uh, should start at the same pH. Now, since we do have twice the concentration, that means it's going to require half the volume to get to the equivalence point. So our inflection point should be at 8 milliliters instead of at 16. And we should also remember that at the halfway point, pH equals pKa, which is 3.9. But this time, the halfway point is not 8 milliliters like it was before. It's 4 milliliters. And so when we draw this titration curve, and it's a little hard for me to draw on the screen here, but it should start here. And we know that at, f at uh, 4 milliliters, the halfway point, we should have uh, 3.9, so it should be right around, uh, whoops, right around here. So it's going to move up kind of like it did before. And then, you know, we should get at that, um, at that inflection point at that, uh, right around here is eight milliliters. We should have that, whoops, we should have this where it goes up pretty quickly there around pH 8, and then it's going to, whoops, continue to go up after that. So this is a, a pretty uh, bad looking curve, but that's the basic idea there. Hopefully on paper you can draw that a little bit better than I did. Of course, that inflection curve should look a little straighter than what I have right there, but those are the ideas there. The titration starts at the same pH, and at the halfway point, which is 4 milliliters, your pH should be about 3.9, and then you have that inflection point in there. All right, now we have another experiment, but this time we have the enthalpy. This is going to be an, a, a calorimetry experiment where the student investigates the enthalpy of a reaction between lactic acid and sodium hydroxide. And the student combines 100 milliliters of a 0.5 molar lactic acid solution at 20 degrees Celsius with 100 milliliters of a 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution at 20 degrees Celsius in a calorimeter. The final temperature of the resulting combined solution is 23.2 degrees Celsius. Assume that the density of each solution before combining is 1 gram per milliliter and that the specific heat capacity of the combined solution is 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. And part 1 says calculate the quantity of heat produced in the reaction in joules, or heat released in the reaction, uh, we should say more correctly. So when we uh, plug this into Q equals MC delta T. Notice that we're trying to solve for Q. So Q is our unknown. Now what's the total mass of this solution? Well, we have 100 milliliters of one solution being added to 100 milliliters of another solution. So that's a total of 200 milliliters. Now it says the density is one gram per milliliter. So if it's 200 milliliters, the mass will be 200 grams. So that's our M here. The problem tells us that the specific heat capacity, C, is 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the temperature goes from 20 degrees Celsius up to, to 23.2 degrees Celsius. So that's a rise of 3.2 degrees Celsius. So when you multiply these by each other, you'll find that we are releasing 2,700 joules. From this process. Now part two says calculate the molar enthalpy of reaction in kilojoules per mole of reaction and include the sign. Well, we know that we have joules or a kilojoules we can calculate from part one, but what about the moles? Well, we have to remember that in the lactic acid we took 0.1 liters times 0.5 molar lactic acid. So when you multiply that, that's 0.0500 moles of lactic acid. And guess what? We had the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide. It was 100 milliliters, or 0.1 liters, of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide. So once again, that's 0.0500 moles of sodium hydroxide. If we look at the stoichiometry of this reaction here, it's a 1 to 1 ratio. So that means that 0.05 moles of lactic acid and 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide, 1 to 1 to 1, we're going to have 
0.05 moles of each of our products. So that makes the stoichiometry pretty nice here. So in our uh, delta H, that's going to be in kilojoules per mole. So 2,700 joules is 2.7 kilojoules. And we want to remember that this is an exothermic process because the temperature is going up. And so we need to change the sign on this to make it negative 2.7 kilojoules and the number of moles we just calculated was 0 0.0500 and when you uh, divide that out you find that the delta H is negative 54 kilojoules per mole so that's the answer to E part 2. Now as we move on to E part 3 we have another question it says the student claims that if heat is lost from the calorimeter to the surrounding air during the reaction then the experimental value of the molar enthalpy of reaction will be smaller in magnitude than the actual value. Do you agree or disagree with the student's claim? Justify your answer. Um, I would agree with this, and I would say that this is, this is the case because if heat is lost from the calorimeter to the surrounding air, then the delta T, the change in temperature, uh, is not going to be as high as it should be. And so if the temperature of the solution doesn't go up by as much as it should, that means that the value that we calculate for Q is also going to be too small. And if Q is too small, then you know that's kind of a chain reaction. That means that the magnitude of delta H that we calculate is also going to be too small. Once again, uh, these are my proposed uh, answers. These are not official. I hope you join me for the next questions or answers, which will be coming out very, very soon. Uh, my name is Jeremy Krug. Thank you for joining me. If you like what you see or you would like uh, to learn more AP Chemistry or uh, share this with your colleagues, please uh, like, subscribe, and join me again. Uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.